I love the Commodore 64. It takes me back in time to the games I played as a child. The C64 Mini is a fantastic way to rediscover all of the great games we remember playing in the 1980s and early 1990s and also discover games that perhaps we always wanted at the time but missed out on the first time round. Or maybe there were even some games that you didn't even know existed but now you get the chance to play them. The C64 Mini was the first miniaturized computer to come from Retro Games, who have since released the A500 Mini and most recently the Atari 400 Mini. These devices went beyond the trend of mini consoles that started with the NES and Super NES Minis and not only gave you a built-in library of games, but straight out of the box provided players with and encouraged players a way to add classic games to expand the library. I'm a huge fan of game preservation and thanks to the C64 Mini I've been able to experience tons of old and new games. It's even introduced me to the vast world of aftermarket releases of new games that are being created for the Commodore 64 even to this day. So in today's discussion I'll be looking to answer the question is the C64 Mini still awesome in 2024. Released by Retro Games, who are a British-based company with their headquarters in Luton of all places, where I have some family roots, the C64 Mini is named as such because there were some legal wranglings over the Commodore and Amiga names, but I think they have since been able to resolve these somewhat, but as these were released before then, they were known as the C64 and A500 Minis instead of the Commodore 64 and Amiga 500 Minis. The system itself is a mini replica of the Commodore 64, complete with a cosmetic keyboard. Yes, if you want a full working keyboard like on the actual Commodore 64 that it had back in the day, you'd have to get the Commodore 64 Maxi, which after having the C64 Mini for a couple of years, I did in fact get when I had the panic that I may not be able to get it if it was no longer on sale anymore. Now after this there was also the VIC-20 that they released which is functionally the same as the Commodore 64 Maxi but to date I have missed out on the chance of getting hold of one of them. Both the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64 Maxi gave you a full-sized system with working keyboard but if you just have the Mini all is not lost for running those games and applications that require you to type. You can either use a built-in virtual keyboard and whilst this is fine for a game where perhaps you just have to hit the number one or spacebar to start a game you won't have to use the virtual keyboard for too much before you get a bit fed up of bringing up this menu and typing that way. The other option is to use a USB keyboard which is a much better option. Unlike the later released A500 and Atari 400 Minis, the C64 Mini is somewhat lacking in its USB ports department. This is something of a teething trouble scenario for retro games as perhaps they didn't envisage that players would all want to load their own games from a USB stick and also want to have a keyboard, a mouse and maybe one or two joysticks all plugged in at the same time. Unfortunately the C64 Mini therefore just does have two USB ports. So you can plug in a joystick and then a USB thumbstick with your extra games on, but then if you also need a keyboard or a mouse, you're kind of in a little bit of a pickle. Now, fortunately, a USB hub will solve this issue and allow you much more flexibility with adding extra things onto the console. The joystick that comes with the C64 Mini functions perfectly well, but isn't my favorite that I've ever used by a long way. But that said, I prefer it to the recently released the 400 mini joystick based on the Atari 400's CX stick, which has these cool extra buttons, but I found were positioned in such a way that I was accidentally clicking them. 
Now, there are loads of buttons on this joystick that comes with the C64 Mini, which is useful, but it's not super clear what they all do at any given time. To be fair, as these are several more than you'd have ever had on a joystick for the Commodore 64 back in the day, there's no way they could have all been labeled in any standardized way. But they are good for bringing up menus or having other shortcuts that you may need in certain games. The actual stick and fire buttons work just fine for the games you have built in, but as soon as the A500 Mini released with its joypad, I plugged that sucker in and rarely looked back. Not that the A500 Mini pad is my favourite for that console either. The C64 Mini has an impressive lineup of 64 games, maybe even a hidden one or two, so that it might actually take it beyond the 64 of the C64 name. Look, it was fitting for the name at the time that the console would come with 64 games. It also made it a good value proposition, and when you consider that you can pick these up in modern times for around 30 to 40 pounds brand new, that's incredible value. It's just a shame that the A500 Mini and the 400 Mini didn't follow this pattern and give you four or 500 games built in as well. Now, like I said, it's possible to put your own games onto the system, which is an interesting thing for the console. It effectively means that as a unit, it gives you the entire library of C64 games ever made. So when it comes to reviewing the games that you get with this console as part of the console review, it feels a bit redundant to judge it on whether or not I'd give it a higher or lower score based on it not including, say, WrestleMania or the Dizzy games. If you want to play Magic Land Dizzy on this, you can after all. But in terms of the built-in games, because I'm sure there will be plenty of you that only ever play the games that are built in on it, they are as follows. Once again, deep breath. Included on it are Alley Cat, Anarchy, Armalite, Competition Edition, Avenger, Battle Valley, Boulder Dash, Bounder, California Games, Chips Challenge, Confusion, Cosmic Causeway, Creatures, Cyberdyne Warrior, Cybernoid 2 The Revenge, Cybernoid The Fighting Machine, Deflector, Everyone's a Wally, Farming Simulator, Fire Lord, Galencia, Gribbiz, Gribbliz Day Out, Hawkeye, Heartland, Herobotics, Highway Encounter, Hunter's Moon, Hysteria, Impossible Mission, Impossible Mission 2, IO, Jumpman, Mega Apocalypse, Mission AD, Monty Mole, Monty on the Run, Nebulous, Netherworld, Nobby the Aardvark, Nodes of Yesod, Paradroid, Pit Stop 2, Ranarama, Robin of the Wood, Rubicon, Skate Crazy, School Days, Snare, Speedball 2, Brutal Deluxe, Spin Dizzy, Star Paws, Steel, Street Sports Baseball, Summer Games 2, Super Cycle, Temple of Apshe Trilogy, The Ark of Yesod, The Thing on a Spring, Things Bounces Back, Trailblazer, Uchi Mata, Iridium, Who Dares Wins 2, Winter Games, World Games, and Zynaps, which I believe is actually 65 games. Now, if you have the North American model, there's quite possibly some differences in the games available. Now, just having a quick look here, I can see perhaps Breakdance, Chips Challenge, trying to spot what's different, just looking at this on the website here, Coil Cop, I think is a different one, having a look to see what else. Destroyer may be different. Street Sports Soccer, Street Sports Basketball, Super Cycle, Sword of Fargoal, Tower Toppler, and West Bank. So yeah, I think there are a few differences between the North American and the European ones. Now, like I said, you can add your own games to this, so you can pretty much get any games on it that you want. Now, my favorite games on it include the likes of Boulder Dash, Speedball 2, Anarchy, Jumpman, Cybernoid, Nebulous. There's a load of good games, and for just the amount of money that this costs, with all of the games that you get on it built in, 
in, there is definitely really good value here. When you consider that the Evercade has got so far, I think, three Commodore 64 collections, which still don't equal the amount of games that you get on this thing, it is definitely the better value. Now, it is a shame that they didn't do like Sega with the Sega Mega Drive Minis, where they also sold mini cosmetic add-on systems like the Mega CD and 32X, as having a mini C64 but no mini tape player leaves the experience feeling a little incomplete. It's amazing how much the love for retro home computers has had a resurgence in recent years and I think a big part of that is down to the C64 Mini and then the likes of the A500 Mini, Evercade and Antstream Arcade giving players a way to experience a classic era of gaming that outside of computer emulation had been all but lost for 25 years. So that is going to wrap up this review and deep dive into whether or not the C64 Mini is still good in 2024. And I really do think it is. It plays really great and it is really good value for all of what you can use this for, not just the games that you get on it, but all of what you can add to it. And there are even ways that you can use the computer programming side of it to make your own games. Now, isn't that exciting? So let me know in the comments, what do you think of the C64 Mini? Is this something that is up your street or have you moved on to newer systems like the Amiga 500 Mini or have you recently got the Atari 400 Mini or are you just more interested in playing the games on a streaming service like Antstream or just getting one of the Commodore 64 collections for your Evercade? As always, I would appreciate if you would smash that subscribe button here on the Geek Battle Gaming YouTube channel and do check out all of the other videos that I've got on the channel, including the recent reviews of the 400 Mini, my past review of the A500 Mini and all of the other console deep dives that I've done recently. You can check out the written article version of today's discussion over at www.extreamed.com tv forward slash gaming and with that until next time stay safe always stay extreme and ciao for now boom and we're off the air